Hello everyone. My name is Reverend John Mumo Kedeka, an ordained priest of the Anglican Church of Kenya. I am married to Helen, who is also an ordained minister of the Anglican Church of Kenya, and we are blessed with one son, Jacob. Currently, I am in Seoul, Republic of Korea, where I have been doing my Master of Art in Education and transiting to my Doctor of Education Studies, majoring on Education Leadership. I am investigating religion and politics in Kenya. Now today, I just decided that it is important if I can bring about the political environment of Kenya as a nation as it is today. And so I would like to discuss with you a little about democracy and lawlessness and uh, these are two broad subjects but I will uh, summarize the insights I have about my observation and investigation that I have done and I am doing currently to inform my study which I am sure that it will be developed to become of use by scholars and persons of interest in Kenya. Now when we talk about democracy and lawlessness, as a Kenyan, what do you think is the difference? And uh, do, you, do we as Kenyans understand the meaning of the terms democracy and lawlessness. Let us look at true democracy. When we look at true democracy, there are a few things that I would like us to think about and try to figure out how, what the terms would mean in relation to the few areas that I am going to discuss. When we talk about true democracy, true democracy, political scholars say that it brings about the sense of belongingness to one's country sense of belongingness to one's country and also it gives one the spirit of consciousness for others especially in our context Kenya as a nation we live as multi-ethnic community we have more than 42 tribes probably 43 and also, the scholars say that it gives one the spirit of consciousness for others. Respect to the rule of law, it exercises limited and all controlled freedom. It also promotes national cohesion and patriotism. And this means the sense of loyalty to the state. Because the state is built by the citizen. Now, it is also important if we can discuss a little further about unhealthy democracy. We have the good part of democracy. But also, I believe 
there is the other negative part of democracy, the unhealthy part of democracy. Unhealthy democracy depicts a picture of superficial sense of understanding of democracy, superficial democracy, democracy which is on the lips, on the lips and no trust for one another, no trust for others in this kind of democracy. It is individualistic, person-centered, rather than communal. It is also material-oriented, rather than the service delivered to the people. No respect to the rule of law. It also fuels anger and hatred, among others. It appears that it is all, all power-oriented and not leadership-oriented. When we try to interpret Kenya's democracy as at now, I think it is important that we have the following areas to, to, look, at, to look at. Politics now in our country, Kenya, seem to have become a platform to abuse democracy, the meaning of democracy. People have used political positions to wield power for themselves, to fight others. This kind of means democracy has created in Kenya or Kenyans have created democracy to mean wielding power to fight others. We fail to have a sense of belongingness and have it burden for others and thus it becomes unhealthy. Politics is becoming poisonous to the systems. It is reading into the systems, wrong perceptions, and also use, use those perceptions to control the masses, the mind of the people. Politics in Kenya today is producing another different kind of paradigm of leadership, which is uh, running parallel uh, to democracy, to the meaning of democracy, true meaning of democracy, but also which is also different in its meaning of interpreting uh, the constitution, interpreting the constitution. So when we look at how Kenya is becoming, how politics in Kenya is becoming, poisonous when we say that when I say that politics in Kenya is becoming a little or even more poisonous it is misguiding the masses politics is misguiding the masses or the people on the constitutional rights the what the constitution says about rights and also the freedoms of persons the politics itself the way we are handling our politics we are misguiding the masses. The new paradigm, which is poisonous, is nurturing in us, or in our people, lawlessness. And Kenya, uh, 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 when our country is redundant to lawlessness, then we are going to have disobedience of the rule of law. The law will be overlooked. Kenyan politics is overshadowing the constitutional interpretation and the meaning of democracy. Therefore, it is becoming kind of a foreign a paradigm, a different paradigm from what was even existing before the clamor for change, which was in 1990s. During the clamor for change, the politics informed leadership 
it also informed democracy and the constitution itself. People spoke in one voice and they also targeted one enemy, common enemy, dictatorship of the Lancaster House Constitution. Where then did we things go wrong? This is a, an area that we need to ask ourselves. It is an area that should be an inter area of interest for the leaders and even for the citizens. In 2002 to 2007, this is a span of five years, there was, we, we can count a number of things that happened, but most importantly, we see the disputed election by the political parties that started losing the party's view of democracy. They, the parties changed their perception of the constitution and the, uh, the, the, the perception which was there was to fight for power and position of influence. This is a perception that was nurtured and generated by the politics. Of course, after the disputed elections in 2002 and 2003 became more <laughs> worse when things started falling apart. The new paradigm that was founded on ethnic divides and regions did not place nation or Kenya nation in a good position. Kenyan got defined on political inter, in, uh, interests. And uh, when I say Kenya became defined on political interest, what are, are, am I saying? Propagating banned politics. We started propagating banned politics and we started nurturing ethnic divisions. The, the disputed presidential elections, for example, in 2007, led to disintegration and disintegration of democracy itself. What was held by the people to be true democracy was nothing to care about. Politics became the basis to determine governance and not democracy again. We lost direction. The country fall apart and there was violence. In 2007-2008 there was violence in most parts of the country and property was destroyed. We have this in memory. The economy went down in double digits, there, there was innocent, uh, loss of innocent lives. Many people lost life in our country. Therefore, this is a, per a period we can say that from 2007, that is, a play, uh, uh, that is the period when, where we lost sense of direction. And that is where the politicians and even other religious, uh, other people, leaders, even religious leaders, the citizens need to come back in mind and try, we try to, re, to regain or gather up ourselves, gather ourselves up back to the track. True democracy, the spirit of democracy was lost. In 2010, there was now the second rebirth. In the middle of that confusion that came in 2007 and we started losing direction, we came to the second rebirth. Okay, all the Kenyans were, were waiting to receive change of the constitution, the reform. And, and this was the agenda, common agenda during the clamor for change. Now it comes to realization in 2010. 
secondary birth. So Kenyans voted in a new constitution in August 4, 2010. There was, the new constitution was promulgated in, on 27th August 2010. And then we entered into reformation period with a new constitution to reform our nation. Kenya has been ushered into reformation period by the new constitution. This is, this is good news. This is good news for everyone. On March 4, 2013, we voted that new, we, we voted the new constitution. And then this new constitution brought about changes in governance and changes in leadership. Devolution came. Two levels of government the national level and the county government level. So implementation process of this new constitution and the devolution has been faced by uh, challenges. Kenyans were not made aware or prepared to usher in devolution and uh, also how to deal with the new challenges that were to present themselves in the face of devolution. This is a period of darkness as well it is a new a time to rejoice and be happy about the new uh, constitution and devolution. It is also a period of darkness. Both national government and county government are now unstable. No one is perfect or, or hand a pre-knowledge on how to implement uh, uh, this devolution. Now, as I conclude this uh, observation paper, I would like us to feel the period that we are in, in the middle of crisis. Kenya is in the middle of crisis. We are in, a cro on, in crossroads. And we must seek ourselves, we must find direction. We must be able to look for the direction. Where is the compass? Now, terrorism is coming to be a counter-attack phenomenon to what or in the we are doing, reformation. We are facing terrorism. And under the reformation, we have implementation of the new constitution, a wrong perception of democracy, and a counter-attack by terrorism. Those three things are very crucial. These aspects need to be investigated by political scientists and give Kenyans a better a platform, a better and a suitable mechanism to handle the problems. Now, the three problems are setbacks to our political, uh, to our development as a nation. They are affecting our diverse integration as a, a multi-ethnic community or society, and also it is leading our nation to a dilemma in a state of confusion. And we need to be aware about this fact. We need to establish conversational tables. Tables where people can discuss these underlying issues amicably, conclusively, to save our nation. As well as our image as a nation, which is getting tainted. And, low, and, and also getting lost into lawlessness. The burned seed of lawlessness, uh, I, if I am asked, I can say it has been planted by politics. As a religious political and a scholar in education, I am now challenged by this new outlook of Kenya's political environment and I ask the scholars, the religious leaders, politicians, and professionals to find a common ground where these issues can be discussed and also a way forward can be established. In all the process, public debate are, health, are healthy through media and the involvement of the citizens will lead to the unity of purpose and also a sense of belongingness 
for each one of us. This is the only way to secure our nation from further disintegration by politics. To me, politics is a mission of God. It's a religious political. It is a mission of God, the creator, God. And it, de it, it defines leadership. Politics defines leadership and governance of a people. In order to have a fair and just leadership and governance systems, in any society, rights and freedoms of individuals must be the center of interest, not personal and selfish ambitions. To me, this is paramount, and it produces the indicators of true democracy. Therefore, I ask Kenyans, let us tolerate each other. Let us try to become friends. Let us embrace our diversity as ethnic communities. Let us define ourselves in the image of God and likeness. Let us see one another as human beings. And those of us who think that we are not one people and we are different people, we need to come back to our senses. And we need to ask God for guidance. Whichever religion we subscribe to, we need to believe that there is a God who is ascribed even in our instrument of power, the constitution of Kenya, in the preamble. And this brings us together. We know religion and, and the state are separate. But even when religion and the state are separate, I want to say, as a religion, religious uh, political scholar, that religion and politics are not separate. They are in inseparable. God bless you.